Hey guys, I am Shaf with Polygon Gaming. I have for you our slightly belated Newbie Tuesday. I was waiting for a submission. I got a couple and uh, here we go. This is from the StarCraft Facebook group. We actually have a um, Protoss player who's on screen right now. He's the blue Protoss player playing for Team Ashes. It's Fapper Dudley. Anyways, he is a former Masters level player who got really kind of bored of playing a super macro style. I think he was like Masters 3 or something like that. And um, he currently, he recently started playing again and got placed in Diamond 3. He thinks he's way, way better than his opponents. But in order to overcome his slight boredom with um, macro style play, he's decided to do like an aggressive contain style with macro behind it now he's around diamond level so this is a diamondish game um but he definitely thinks he's better than that we'll see how it goes and uh see if we can give him some feedback along the way uh he has opened with a two gate into a cyber core that means this uh expansion's a little bit late this is begging to be knocked down by like a 12 pool or something but we've got a very standard game this is a l game played on ladder so it looks like um might have been a hatch first into gas into pull maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, Chris playing a very standard game. We've got a little poking around here, but the probe uh, trying to be a little sneaky, I think. But he's going to run right underneath this overlord. So we're not going to be able to hide anything. We'll see where uh, where Fapper Dudley decide Fapper do play? I, I don't I don't know. I'm, we're just going to call him Fapper. We're going to uh, we're gonna call him Fapper. <sighs> Such a weird name. I, we... His name's Wesley on Facebook. We're going with that, okay? All right. Uh, so Wesley versus Chris. We've got, um, looks like Chris is electing to do a gas heavy build. He's getting the metabolic boost and continuing to mine this gas. Oh, getting a fast baneling nest. Maybe he's going to do some baneling shenanigans. I'm not real sure. This baneling nest, not typical. Typically you see, um, after metabolic boost, you see the Zerg player pull these guys off and get a quicker third. Third usually goes up between 245 and three minutes. So this is going to be maybe a faster tier two. Maybe he's doing Muta, Hydra. I'm not really sure, but either way, this is not looking like a very standard game from either side. We have a forge going down, so Fapper deciding not to go into uh, like Stargate or Robo or something, which is typically what you see after a cyber core or a huge commitment of gateways into gateway units. Instead, going for a forge, and he's out on the map with with two stalkers and a zealot and a mothership core. He's building a pile. Of, oh, I, he might just be doing a little two gate rush or. Actually, he just have forge. He's gonna cannon him. He's actually gonna cannon up right here and just like inch his way towards his opponent, or stop his opponent from taking a third. We'll see if he's poking around with the mothership core at any point. Anyways, this natural going to be completing for Fapper Dudley. Fapper Dupli Wesley for Wesley for Wesley. Damn it! Pile on overcharges do go down. Both pile on overcharges is gonna knock back the links. Now these. Overcharges have a certain amount of time until the Lynx can come back and put some pressure on. And we've got some cannons going down with Stargates coming behind this. This is a good follow-up for uh, the Stargate because we've got a lot of mineral expenditure. He's going to have some gas banked up he'll want to spend. Warp Gate going to be completing here shortly, which means we'll be able to reinforce this army. And this first cannon's finishing up now, so the Lynx pretty much going to be useless. We've got a lot of Queens, though, who could start inching the creep that way and try to get into a better position or perhaps even use some trans fuses i'm surprised that we don't see a uh, a roach warren or something like that uh just yet from from the zerg player typically skipping a roach warren can be bad as we saw in previous games with stefano on this channel we're a little poking trying to pull these links into the cannons but it's not going to work some great control there by chris now on the other side of the map we have uh, wesley over here uh with another gateway in production and pretty much nothing else going on the upgrades a little bit late but oracles and stuff so that it's okay to to delay the upgrades if you are getting such good units out instead gas expenditure of course very crucial for a protoss anyways link's taking a little bit of damage just poking to see what kind of army is here for the protoss now while all of this is happening chris is getting a pretty hefty bank as you see the minerals and gas are pretty heavily built up he's forgot to build some overlords so one thing you know at this level you do see people getting supply blocked quite a bit uh my advice to hold on i'm actually going to pause this my advice to anyone that's a zerg player is 
build one overlord per hatchery. Okay, so if you're if you've got two hatcheries, every cycle you should be building two overlords. Now this changes a little bit if you have roaches. If you have two hatcheries, maybe you want to build three overlords, maybe four overlords, so like one and a half to two. Um, but when you're doing a ling heavy style, as we see here, just one overlord. That's all it really takes. And as long as you're constantly doing that, you'll never forget and get supply blocked unless um, your overlords start getting sniped. But that that's just not the case yet. Now let's see. Does Wesley know? Yeah, he knows that there is no third base. In either location, Oracle almost dying. Oh man, those queens. Slightly sad that there wasn't any creep there to continue that chase. But either way, Oracle has done uh, some of the damage that he wanted to do. Um, which, which mostly, primarily, that's scouting. He's going to save up some revelation energy, and that's going to be good to go. But in the Zerg's position here. He's going to want to get around, yep, there we go, he's going to swing these lings around, and that's going to give him the ability to do a little offensive pressure. There's probably not that much defense, considering that Wesley has committed so much to this little, uh, little outpost at the front of Chris's natural. So the ling's going to be able to swing here into this third, and I don't think there's going to be a lot that uh, Wesley can do to stop, uh, stop that from happening. In any case, uh, there's no ground army here to defend these cannons, I think these queens, if well uh, utilized, could actually uh, go ahead and kill that off. Oh, Ling's going to try and kill off this uh, this base. I think they are going to get the kill before. Yep, good cancel there, and the Ling's going to be uh, pulled right on away. Could utilize some drops or something here to really put Wesley on his, um, his back foot, but I think uh, so far, so good here for Chris. Either way, we've got some serious macro issues for both of these players. As you can see, major supply block here for Fapper Dupli. He was uh, banking on this right here to to keep him unsupply blocked. Never a good idea when taking a risky expansion like this. But Chris trying to expend some of his extra minerals with a few extra hatcheries. Imagine if he got roaches a little bit earlier. He would uh, he had the minerals for it. And he'd have knocked this down by now. He'd have a third by now, and he wouldn't need two macro hatches, uh, you know, in in his main. Just uh, just some things to consider. Skipping the the building may seem like a good idea initially, but in the end, it it, it can it can cost you more than it'll save you. <laughs> Void Ray doing a little poke in here, but gonna get repelled here by the queens. And the Hydralisks finally swinging in here, gonna knock this outpost down. And it is only here at eight and a half minutes that this is falling, so around nine minutes he'll be getting his third expansion. His opponent already has a third expansion. As a Zerg player, you need to be one base ahead. One base behind is two bases of unevenness. If you are one base ahead against a Protoss player, as a Zerg, you're even with him. So this is two bases behind. Um, Economically speaking, he's gonna throw away this army, and if he can kill the third, he'll be in a good spot. He's gonna have to reinforce and secure his own third. But ooh, nice stasis ward, taking out five of the hydralists. Another big stasis ward there, and another one as well. So Chris definitely falling into the stasis ward. Uh, but Void Ray takes a beating couple of uh, zealots here to absorb some damage trying to focus with the hydralis take out some of these phoenix and some of these other hydralis going to be popping out of the stasis here momentarily and here we go here are their counterparts as well and a lot of this ground army bleeding to the hydralis but hydralis are glass cannons and with nothing here to soak the damage it is very unfortunate situation for chris who is taking two additional bases he is now going to be on four bases with excuse me six hatcheries total and um that just s screams way too many minerals early on and a bad expenditure and as you can see he's now floating a lot more gas in his minerals because of having to take these bases and here is a fourth base for wesley watch me have his name wrong Watch me like be calling this guy Wesley and his name be like Bob or something. I'm really bad at my job, guys. My bad. All right, so we've got Chris finally establishing a third base. This is nice. Five Hydras is gonna be trying to reinforce the Hydras over here, but good revelation here by Wesley. 
Wesley staying on top of his production. Mothership Court is on the way. We're going to see a switch into carriers very shortly, and Chris does not have any option of Vipers. He does not have a Hive. He does not have Corruptors. He does not have Mutalists. If he is able to knock down this third, he'll be in an okay spot, but I don't see how he's going to be able to deal with the carrier advantage that Wesley is threatening. Now, the Lings are absorbing a lot of the damage from the Gateway Army, but the Air Army taking a lot of the beating from the Hydralisk and dealing a beating as well. Now the Ground Army breaking through the Hydralisk and the Mothership Corps popping through as well. That's going to make short work of the remaining Zerg Army. Only five Hydralisks remain retreating. The Protoss Army choosing not to chase, instead choosing to Shark Mode. Replenish those shields just a little bit. As you can see, the Protoss is building cannons on essentially every attack path uh, to any of his bases that are possible, except for this attack path here. This is the one with the least number of cannons. Reason being, his army wants to engage on this kind of wider area where he can get to the Hydralisks that much quicker. The carrier's going to be very much dominant in this game against Hydralisks as long as there are gateway units there to engage the Hydralisks directly. And as you can see, he's slowly shifting forward towards this other base. And uh, just controlling this area here is beneficial to him. But it looks like he's going to try this attack path here. Uh, I think grabbing the Zelnaga might be wise in this case. Um, you never want to push blind like this because there's so much that could be attacking. And this base is wide open with only one cannon there. Imagine just lings for one second flooding right in through this hallway. Because, you know, this attack path's safe, but this one's not. In any case, we have the engagement. Some key storms going down. This Ling Hydra army melting to the storms. He's actually going to be forced to just run past it all. And, yeah, that's actually very brutal. Chris going to be leaving the game without the GG. Now, he was floating 1,600 minerals, 1,700 gas. And if we were to recap this game and ask ourselves, what could Chris have done differently? I think he definitely needed that Roach Warn. You should always have that Roach Warn, even if you don't make a single Roach all game. You should always have it. Um, another key issue for him was just getting supply blocked at unfortunate times, so definitely working through those cycles. But let's flip it. What could Wesley have done better? Well... Let's just give him the, the, the strategy. Like, I, this is what he wants to do. Let's support him in that. Let's just not give strategic insight on him. But as far as execution of what he did do... But as far as execution of what he did do... I'm a huge fan of the outpost forward. It's very offensive. It contains his opponent. But if his opponent had broken through that with roaches or even with some banelings... That would have been a hard army to stop at certain moments, and when you're going for a Stargate tech like this, well, the Stargate tech's a little bit delayed because you didn't get the Cyber Core and said you got a second gateway. In addition, you don't have that much defense in either your natural or your third, so you're really just reliant on your opponent not breaking through or not running around your containment. And should either or both of those happen, well, you saw what happened in this game. So, i definitely say having some more awareness of like where the opponent's going and working some kind of con contingency plan into defending that third should the Zerg break out like we saw in this game and maybe even a little bit sooner. Anyways, guys, I really enjoyed casting this. Thank you so much to Wesley for sending us this replay. He's uh, sent us a few others, but they're all non-Zerg, and I don't feel comfortable talking uh, too much about strategic in-depth insights into non-Zerg matchups. So my apologies, Wesley, but I hope you'll continue sending us ZVP, PVZ. Either way works for me, man. Games where you're losing, I can definitely give you some help uh, there. So, you know, guys, send, uh, send me all the replays. Uh, even if you're not Wesley, if maybe you're... Uh, 
a member of that StarCraft Facebook group I was telling you about. I'll put a link in the description here to that group. You guys should join up if you have a Facebook account. We're always in there helping each other. We've got uh, Neuro and Tempo and some really cool other guys in there as well. So just, you know, just throw your replays up in there. You'll either get a cast from me or some feedback from some really great guys, some awesome individuals, and some really fun people to hang out with. Anyways, guys, I'm Shaft of Polygon Gaming. My email address is cheesyshaft at gmail.com. Link is in the description. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. If you want to be notified when we release videos like this, please make sure you hit the subscribe button. If you don't know where that is, I'm not going to teach you how to use the internet. There's probably no hope for you.